a new city scooter with dual front suspension, a powerful motor and quick charging technology. Is it good enough to beat the competition and more important, is it the right choice for you? Let's inspect! Hi everybody, how are you doing? Nice to meet you, I'm Michael. And yes, as usual, some fresh cool tech to be inspected today. This scooter, uh, it's by the company called Frigo, which very much want to sound like an American-based company, although this scooter is made in China and it is supposed to challenge another Chinese-made scooter, which is called the Ninebot Max, which I'm pretty sure that if you have ever Googled around for good electric scooters, you definitely are aware of. So, uh, pretty interesting specs given the 500 watt motor and the 48 volt battery but is the whole pack good enough that's why we're here and we keep on riding Frigo clearly will face quite serious competition not only from Ninebots Max series but also the new G series I'd also seriously consider the Navi N65 by Navitech, which was recently tested on the channel and has shown some remarkable qualities. So no matter what your final choice is, I think we can agree that in 2022 there are plenty of good choices for electric scooters that offer comfort during riding and pretty decent range and acceleration. Unpacking. With total weight of 22 kilos, this is not among the heaviest city scooter boxes that I've taken apart and this is definitely a good thing. Most makers are always in the search for the optimal balance between weight of the scooter and the range. This one weighs only 19 kilos, which is pretty much the same as Ninebot Max. In fact, if I may deepen the analysis further, looks like out of the closest competitors, the Frigo scooter excels with almost indestructible tires, dual front suspension, highest top speed, highest climbing ability and very compact design. So this is why we are in process of testing so that we can confirm whether that is indeed a little better than the competition and if it is, it can be among the best choices for such a device right now. Getting rid of the box and this is it. The assembling procedure is very simple, you just need to put the handlebar and tighten the screws. It is not a foldable or QR based one, but I can promise you that the installation is going to take no more than 5 minutes. Now, the thing that stunned me a little is that it comes with this Ninebot branded lock. A nice surprise, I would say. Here we get the user manual, it's quite helpful during the setup phase. After taking care of the four screws, the scooter is pretty much riding ready. You may charge the battery up to full prior to the first riding. Nice feature is the fast charging technology supported. It can reach 80% of the full battery capacity within around two hours. From my end, it is indeed confirmed and that's a small breakthrough. There is no need to adjust the pressure of the tires because they're not inflatable. Luckily, they also wouldn't feel plastic and cheaply made. While I've always been rooting for solid tires on electric scooters where roads are not great and you often get punctures, I've always been picky about the material that they are made of because some models can be very annoyingly uncomfortable. I'm glad to say that tires on this scooter are not that stiff, grip is great and so far they've never let me down. Considering the main technical specifications, we have a 500 watt motor in the rear wheel, maximum speed of 40 km per hour, a 360 watt hour battery, 10 inch solid tires, dual braking system, easy to use folding mechanism, dual front suspension, 24% uphill climbing ability, Bluetooth and a smartphone app and all of that weighs 19 kilos. So based on the specs, this must be a really decent scooter and gosh, it's really windy today. Uh, this actually is something that many people do. They, they buy the gear based on specs, which would be great unless sometimes there have been some deviations between expectations and reality. And I think this is where such kind of reviews come handy, especially if the person doing them has some sort of headaches because sadly, online, a lot of these experts... Anyhow, that's, that's a different topic. So the key takeaways, we have front suspension, which is pretty nice. Uh, however, you can see that fairly limited. Indestructible tires, which is quite a great advantage. I would say in, in terms of riding comfort we are not quite there yet because uh, with the 9-bolt max for instance we have 10 inch inflatable tires the air inside these tires is actually compensating a lot of those uh, road bumps while here this is supposed to be done by the suspension and I, I would say this jingling that you probably hear while I'm going through paved roads 
it's a bit of annoying but the good news is that if we exclude the noises riding comfort is pretty good as for the acceleration and the remaining components let's keep on riding Among the most important components of a scooter is, of course, the motor. Its performance is decent, totally enough in terms of acceleration, especially if you plan to ride the scooter on bike lanes. The European edition of the Frigo E10 Pro comes within most EU limitations, with maximum speed of just 25 km per hour. I couldn't unfortunately lift this limitation from within the smartphone app, kind of a bummer. There also is cross control available, which in some countries is not allowed, but it's also something you can control from within the smartphone app. I definitely don't think this motor is that much better than the one inside N65. In fact, I feel Navitech scooter has better overall performance and acceleration and is also rated at 500 watts. Undeniably, E10 Pro accelerates faster than 9V Max. Riding comfort is good, most bumps are not that notable, however the scooter is quite noisy and gets even noisier in time because of the suspension on the front. This fork is responding well, but is rather basic, around up to 5cm compensation, which in some cases could be crucial. You cannot disable it, and with having more weight on the rear end given the motor there, the scooter is not great for bunny hopping either. Brakes are quite good, there only is one lever to control both of them, a brake on the rear and a drum brake on the front. Perfect for aggressive braking, maybe some of you may even feel it as if it's happening quite suddenly at the beginning. But overall, this is among the scooters with most reliable and consistent braking that I've tested so far. One other thing to note about the board, since portability seems to be among the priorities here, it's the first time I feel that a scooter deck is too short for me. If you wear shoes bigger than 43 EU size, maybe you should keep your rear foot laying on the fender, as we often do for the more powerful off-road electric scooters. Quick demo of the folding mechanism, very simple, looks reliable, but, well, you can notice that after a while, it shows some disturbing signs of being affected after riding off-road. Good news is that if you get this slack, you can tighten the screw and it's gonna be back to normal. The equipment on the handlebar is just about enough. Brake with a label. I mean, what could such a lever be used for if not for braking? There is the bell. Very interesting position for the power button. It's below the display and if you ride at higher speed, this may affect your balance if you try to adjust it. It is used for switching between the gears and turning on or off the lights. There's odometer only showing you the current session's distance. For more information, you may refer to the smartphone app. It is called KCQ Scooter and is apparently not designed by Frigo themselves. Has a bunch of data, including the total distance covered by the scooter. This has been a surprise, by the way, because I'm pretty sure mine is only around 90 out of these close to 400 kilometers shown. You can switch between gears, control the lights, do some further adjustments. However, speed settings are not possible. Also, you can transform the scooter from a kickstart scooter into a scooter that accelerates from a steel point. Now, seeing this 48% battery left, time to comment about it. The promised 25 mile range right now feels as a unicorn. In my opinion, this scooter is comparable to Mi Scooter 3 series in terms of range, but totally not in the same league as Navitex N65 or 9 bot Max. I kept on squeezing around 25 and 30 km per charge Perhaps out of all of the components and features, the range is one of the areas to criticize. As for the drawbacks list, if what I just mentioned about the range counts, let's put it here, generic smartphone app, lack of speed customizations, not too informative display which is barely visible in direct sunlight and mediocre front suspension. So here's the subjective part. Although this scooter in theory is superior to 9 bot Max because of the suspension, the acceleration and the quick charging, I believe the feeling you're getting out of 9 bot scooter is a lot nicer and riding may feel smoother. However, tire punches are possible. So that's been a great opportunity to try an interesting new scooter, certainly not perfect, but uh, very, very decent, coming by Frigo. And, and I think that's the question, would you go for something with really solid tires, which are absolutely puncture-free, but you do have a bit of jingling and some sort of incapable front suspension, or you would prefer to go for the Nibot Max with its smoother riding comfort and clearly the better range and the higher price. A lot of components to assess before buying your next scooter but if you have more ideas or questions of course 
I'll be present in the comment section below the video. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Hope to see you soon. Bye.